Let's see if this is working. Boom, I don't know if this is working. Let me know in the chat if you can hear me. I meant to go get something, so I'll be right back in two seconds. Amazing. Amazing. I don't know. It's a white screen, so you can't see me because I'm not ready yet. I wish I had music, but I'm not allowed to play music on it. Which, well, I can play music. Welcome, very homey, thank you. Thank you, I'm just gonna, just gonna tweet it out really quick and then we're gonna start going. Let me figure out. Hello, Nick. How are you? Nick. That's me, but not me. I will be up in one this and now now it's good we're good um let's see jesus i'm a mess i'm a hot mess hot mess let's see Hello, everyone. I don't know how many people are in here. See this, let's see, Jesus. I'm a mess. I'm a hot mess. This microphone. 
I don't know whether or not. Kyle Cushman. Nicholas Robertson. That is right. We're having a lot of tech. Having a lot of technical difficulties. Because this microphone. See this microphone? I don't know how many people are in here. I'll tell you a little story about it. See this. Let's see. Um, I'm a mess. I'm a hot mess. This microphone. What happened was went on a trip to Florida one year. Um, my girlfriend and I shared a suitcase. And unfortunately, I decided to bring my mic because... You know what? I I try I made videos and I didn't have the camera microphone. Like I have a microphone on top of my camera. And for some reason, I didn't have that yet. I just still use this camera mic or this microphone, sorry, for my camera. And well, it was either nail polish or nail polish remover. It all fell on it and Somehow, some way, this is still surviving to this I day. I made videos and I didn't have the camera microphone. Like, I have a microphone on top of my camera. And so I don't know if you can hear that little, tiny, high-pitched squeaking noise. Um, but yeah. Yeah. How's everyone doing? How's everyone doing? I, I don't... Um, I don't really know what how I wanted to do this. Usually, like, I would maybe, like, play video games, hop into a game, and talk to people. Um, but, yeah. Is everyone hyped for the Leaf game in, I guess, almost two hours? I'm trying to... Oh, you can eat... You can do pools. Okay. This is very cool, very different. Somebody was asking, am I hosting Game Over Toronto for SDPN? I'm not. I'm not, unfortunately. That's... That's not... That's not me. Would be cool, but unfortunately things... Things didn't work out on that front. You just got back from Prague? How was that? Or you just got back to Prague from Toronto. How, how was your stay in Toronto? How, how was everything here? Was it good? Matthew's for 60. He better get 60. I made a graphic and it was... It better be for 60. He better get 60. So, I, I, di I didn't know really know how to... Uh, really talk i didn't know whether or not we would just talk about nick robertson talk about anything um you guys have any questions please feel free to put them down in the chat i'd love to answer any questions you guys have um we can you know what we're gonna try something here we're gonna we're gonna switch. I'm still a little bit overexposed here. Let me... Like, I don't like that. But... to roll with this one for now roll with the punches here the chances of robertson playing game one are pretty high um i'm gonna be honest there i think actually it's maybe not high <laughs> that was very not good of me to say um you, you, when you look at their lineup right now um you have Michael Bunting out. 
And that's one guy that they're going to really lean on, especially in the playoffs. And they've said he's going to be ready for game one. So I, I'm going to say it, it's it's very possible, but I don't know. If he, if he shows that he can be good in these last few games of the season, sorry, um, I think anything's possible. Um, but I, I want to I wanna see if this works. I want to transition to um, another thing. Yeah, okay, that worked. Good. Um, so y- you're looking here at his point totals. It's crazy that, like, the, there were instances where I thought, okay, maybe it's Alex Steves who gets called up. Um, Joey Anderson... Brett Sini, one of those guys. It's really hard to overlook the season that Robertson's having. He, If he played a full season in the AHL, his scoring rate would be bananas. Like It would be crazy. Like He's got 15 goals in 26 games. To put it into perspective a little bit, the Marlies had a, or they still do, they have a rookie goal record of 23 goals in a season. And that was by Josh Levo. Bobby McMahon's now tied it. But in 26 games, Nick Robertson was more than halfway there, which is mind-blowing because Bobby McMahon has played f- over 50 games, Alex Steves over 40 games. So if you gave Nick Robertson probably 10 or 15 more games, I mean, it's always possible that it, it would be maybe a little bit more it might be at the same rate as alex steves actually but that that also proves the point of just how good their depth is um you saw the least destroy washington nice score four against keith kincaid and you even went to a jays game that's that's pretty good was it a good idea to call him up yeah yeah i'd say yeah i think that Robertson has showed at the AHL level how how good he can be, and he can be really good. So I, I think I think he's proved and he's had enough time to gain his confidence back after his injury to to really come to the NHL and have a strong showing. I mean, he's going to play on the second line tonight, so there's there's always the possibility that he could come in and show how good he is, but. I think he really deserved this opportunity. I said, I believe, once Michael Bunting got injured that it was either going to be Nick Robertson or Alex Steves, and they went with Nick Robertson, which I, I think is a good choice. I think either choice is good. Um, but Nick Robertson is a good choice. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Is he a t- legit top six winger eventually? Uh, I I think so. Um, although he's on the small side, how tall is he? I think five. He's five nine. Like he he can be a scrappy player to play against, and he could be one that's not really fun for other players. But he has a lot of speed, and when he has his confidence, he's very good. Like especially at the AHL level, he was doing everything he could to bring the puck into the zone. He was making moves around defenders that you really have never seen him do at that level. So I think when you look at it and you look at just the way he's played and just the fact that he would probably be better suited to play with better players just because of, for one, he's coming into the league. You need to set him up for that success and set him up to have that confidence in the AHL. And two, it's, it's, it's really, again, just about his skill and his shot and what he can do. And I, I think he can score at a good rate in the NHL. He's he's shown that he can do it in the AHL. He's shown he can do it in the OHL. I, I think there it's got to be time to show him. And it's unfortunate that he doesn't get that first chance at the beginning of the season. But I think it's still good. SDA is, uh, he's bounced around a little bit. Um, 
He's been with SDA. He's been with Mikhail Abramov. Um, SDA is out with an injury right now, and I don't know if he will be back for any of the Marlies games for the rest of the season. Um, so there's that. He did play with SDA a lot. He played with SDA a lot, I'm sure you might know, with Peterborough in the OHL. And they were really good together. They were really good together in the AHL too. It's just at times, like, it's really hard to find success at all times. And SDA is like, he's a he's grown a lot in this season with the Marlies, especially with his size and his... I, I know there was a lot of talk earlier, like, in I, the rookie camp, I think, Haley Wickenheiser said there was a lot of talk about just his his weight and him needing to have muscle. I think he's built muscle over the course of the season and has gotten more confident, has played a lot better. So SDA was his main center for a little bit. There was a little bit of time with other players, but he Robertson's been up and down the lineup too. Matt, any Marlies you think are locks to be on the lease next year other than Robertson? I can't give that to you. That's a video that I'm going to come out with in a few days. Um, actually, no, that's not a video that I'm coming out with in a few days. That's who would be good in the playoffs with the Leafs. But it's sort of the same. Who's good, Who could be a good player with the Leafs in the playoffs? who could be a player that evidently could be somebody who plays with the Leafs next season. I think it's the, I think it's the same. You're in the same boat. I, I don't think there's anybody in particular that wouldn't be of use right now for the Leafs in the playoffs. Um, in terms of maybe defensemen, I, I think Carl Dahlstrom is is the first one up there. Um, I think Christians Rubens is also a big body, somebody who can play and somebody who's very strong with or without the puck. Um, if I'm trying to think of anybody else on defense, I can't think of somebody soul, but... Yeah, I'd say Rubens, Dahlstrom, those guys are going to be good, but also the fact that the Leafs have a very, very tight defense core that is really hard to get into. If you had to pick two, who are the Marlies goalies to start next year? That's a very difficult question, Matt. Um, That's very hard. That's... That's really hard. I think, like, you look at Dryden McKay, who they just signed yesterday. They have Joseph Wall, um, Eric Schalgren, if you want to put him back down with um, the Marlies. You have Keith Petruzzelli, who deserves a full-time AHL gig. There's, There's four goalies that will be battling for two spots. And... Again, whether or not it, it could be that Shulgren goes up and stays there as the Leafs backup, I, I don't personally think or really know if the Leafs like him at that spot right now. He doesn't have the best save percentage. It'll it'll be cool to see what he does in the playoffs, but I think again it's going to be Wall, Shulgren, Petruzzelli, McKay's like. That's a big one, especially with the numbers he put up um, at Minnesota State. So yeah, they're gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be really fun to have goalies next year. Petruzzelli's weaknesses. I don't. Don't really know if he has any. I mean, he has his size. He's very tall, very big in the net. Um, he can get across really fast. He has good athleticism. I, I Realistically, too, I don't know if I saw enough of Petruzzelli with the Marlies to really find the weaknesses 
again, he's been really good with the Marlies too. There was, I think, one game after I made a video about the Leafs tr- should probably sign him where he gave up five goals against. But I know there was somebody. Oh, and who is the best defenseman the Leafs have drafted in the last five years? Timothy Lilligren, Rasmus Sandin are the two. I think in a few years we're going to look at Topi Niemela as one of those three as well, but not yet. You don't want to get a little bit... Um, what's the word? I, I don't I don't know what the word is, but... Um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be really interesting to see. But yeah, it's it's gonna be fun. You had Toby, Toby Niemela. It's it's good. Matthews last two games were Detroit, one goal, five assists, six points. Mariner's last two games versus Detroit, five goals, three assists, eight points. Well, William, it's going to be a fun game against Detroit, isn't it? It's going to be really fun to see, um, just to see what happens with the Marlies next year. Like, today was their last regular season practice, and probably their last practice... Um, of the season and it's just like it has you wondering who's going to be who's going to be around next year who's going to be it's, it's going to be a lot of the same people but it's going to be interesting to see how many points and goals do you realistically see for Robertson on a full season if he plays top six minutes. Is that is that in the AHL? I'm guessing that's in the NHL because you're saying he plays top six. If it's NHL, um, I don't really want to... I don't know. I, I'd say 50 points, 60 points. Um, definitely, I, I, I'd want to push for 20 goals. I maybe even want to push for 30, but that's a big jump, especially for Robertson. But at the same time, he's got 15 and 26 in the AHL. Like, if you look at that, let me see. Let me do some calculations here. If he does that for an entire season, one sec, 15 divided by 26. Okay, so he'd be at four. So if he did that in a whole season, 72 games with the Marlies, if he played every single game, he'd be on pace, he's on pace for 41 goals. Um, so... So, yeah, it's... It would be, I'd say, around... Um, 30 goals, I think, is pushing it, even with Marner and Matthews. But it's definitely going to be interesting. Uh, yes. Any chance Douglas battles for fourth line NHL minutes next year? That's a tough one. It, it, it's especially tough when we don't know who is going to be on the Leafs' fourth line next year? Like, you think about it, they win a cup. What the heck's going to happen there? Like, who knows? It's it's going to be it's going to be interesting either way. I I think he has a shot for sure. Might maybe be somebody who stays in the AHL for a little bit longer, but. I do think Douglas, he would be of use, especially with his size. Sorry. In the AHL, what is going on? Definitely, I'd say, is is on the cusp of 
probably getting a chance and getting a look. They signed him to a two-year NHL deal anyways, so and it starts next year, so you'd, you'd think that the Maple Leafs are maybe thinking about getting him a look at the NHL level. Now, I don't don't know. If we look up Nick Robertson, look up the Marley standings here for a sec. This is going to be a lot of fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. Joey Duzak. Um, Joey Duzak's actually, I believe, at the end. This is his last year. Let's take a look. Let's go to Cap Friendly for a sec. I believe this is Joey, Joey Duzak's last year under contract with the Maple Leafs. Yeah, it is, and then he's an RFA. Um, I, I don't believe he'll be back, just in the sense that there was a report from Friedman that came out. Plus, he, has, he doesn't have a chance to go up on this team. He probably deserves to have at least an NHL look. But he does not get it with the Leafs. So, I think for him, um, I think it's worth it to go to try and get up somewhere else. But yeah, there's Rindell is going to be here. So, a few people have said, oh, that's, that's Joey Duzak, Swedish Joey Duzak. So, who knows? Miko Kokonen is going to be here next season too, I believe. So, that'll be interesting. Philip Crawl still here. William Villeneuve, he'll be here. I I don't know about Chad Chris. He's an interesting one. Kivi Halme, don't know if he'll be back. He's a UFA, so there's always that. And yeah, and then you look at the goalies. Michael Hutchinson. I I you he could come back. I. I don't want to count that out, but I doubt he's back. Ian Scott, not sure what's going on with him. Carter Hutton's definitely, I don't think, coming back. And then Wolves here until 2025-26. What are Lily Green and Sandine's contracts looking like next season? Well, let's take a look at what they are. Because it is going to be interesting well why am I going to look at what they are it's going to be so Lilligren they're both am I missing something oh yeah he's injured so they're both RFAs I think they'll command I think they'll get around like one and a half two million bucks I don't know if that's right I'm not really at times good at predicting contracts but it would be reasonable. Like they haven't shown, and they haven't played big enough minutes where they can ask for four to five or six or seven million. Um, but it'll be interesting to see when they like get out of their RFA years to see how much money they're making. But yeah, that's. I think that's that's really it. And you look at the Marlies forwards. Amarov, don't. That's a really tough one to really figure out because of his diagnosis. Dmitry Ovchinnikov, he's currently with the Marlies. Braden Kressler, not yet with the Marlies. Ty Voigt, not yet with the Marlies. Gogolev with the Marlies. That's an interesting contract for the next two seasons Steve's with the Marlies that's a good contract for the next two seasons Holmberg 
decent contract. Abramov, pretty good signing at this point. SDA as well. Joey Anderson is here next season. And he'll also be a guy who you could look at playing on the Leafs' fourth line maybe next season. Curtis Douglas and Max Ellis. Max Ellis is an interesting one. It's going to be interesting to see um, how he plays next season with the Marlies. But yeah, they've got a lot of players. Of Chinnikov, um, he's actually not... I, uh, honestly, you don't really see much of him. Um, and what I mean by that is he hasn't played a lot. I think he's played... Uh, like f- f- five or six games in the AHL. Seven games. Seven games, two goals. Uh, I think I think it's, again, it's all about next season. There's going to be a lot. Um, it's going to be a lot of younger guys coming to the Martleys next season, and this guy's going to be one, I think, who might play an important role. Ty Voigt's looking a lot like a steal. I haven't even... Let me look up Ty Boyd's stats for a sec. Because... I... Why can I not find... I haven't really... Looked at it. 80 points in 67 games with Sarnia Singh. Not bad. Not bad. I don't... With covering the Marley so much, I never really look at um, a lot of the prospects. Just because I'm already looking at so many players and I have no idea how um, people pay attention to all those prospects anyways. Oh, sorry. But yeah, Ty Boyd's look at, he's looking like a steal, actually. Looking pretty decent. Yeah, Nick Robertson. Coming in. Um, I know what I'm going to do. Noah McDonald. Do you see Holmberg getting any games next year in the NHL? I think preseason he'll get a look. Uh, I can't really tell you. I don't, I don't know if he would get many games at the NHL level right away, but I think there's a pot, like, it's so difficult because the Leafs have such a deep lineup every single year now that it's so difficult to really pinpoint how good they can be. And where these players could play. Sorry. But. Yeah. We're gonna. I want to. The Tavares line with Robertson. It's. Let me just. I want to. I didn't really take a look too deep at the lines. So you have Kerfoot, Matthews, Marner. That's an interesting one. It's it's interesting that Keefe is still deciding to go with um, Nylander on the third line. I, I find that very interesting. Just in the sense that, like... Um, just in the sense that he's pretty good, and I'd love to see a Matthews, Marner, Nylander line. But the McKay of Tavares, Robertson line is really interesting because Tavares is still like I wouldn't say he's he's fast, 
compared to how fast he was before. So that'll be interesting. I think, like, especially with Mikheyev and Robertson on the, the wings, I, I think that's a little bit... It'll be interesting to see. See it, how, how much Tavares can play to those two guys' speed. Um... Oh. Need coffee. I think they'll look good. I think Robertson will show that he's really good. Keith said that he would do Nylander on Tavares's line. He he said that I I didn't see that, so that's that's new to me. McCabe, Robertson, Nylander would be a fast-scoring line. Yeah, that one would be big. That one would be good. But who's going to play... Se- if if Nylander actually like went to go play center, that would be an interesting one because he did play center when he was younger, I believe. So there's that. Will Crawl get into any games with the Leafs? That's... That's a difficult question. Right now, he's injured, I believe, so you won't see it yet. But it was on Kipper's show today. Did he? Or is that what they're saying? Is that what they think he's gonna do? Or did he? Did Keith say it on their show? Because I'd find it interesting that he would share that information yeah Nylander was drafted as a center I think that would be interesting but also Mikheyev who knows if he's going to be here next year you know oh so what it was so wait Keith what uh I think Keith was on the show okay Just to confirm, he was on the show. I just want to make sure I'm getting it right. I think, though, one of the interesting things and one of the things I'm excited about most for the least in the playoffs is this line, or this pairing right here. Like, that would be good. Adam Wilde said he sees Robertson peeking to the Bozak type. What would you say is his NHL comparison? Well, let's take a look. I don't... I... I really, like... I want to go to goal scorers. I think when you look at it, what like one of the players that already like you think about. Um, if I can, f- Alex DeBrinket. Like I, I don't think Robertson is at the level of DeBrinket, but like he's, I believe, yeah, he, he's he's two inches smaller than. Uh, than Robertson. So I, I think... Like, it, it it all depends. Like, Robertson can go on a heater and he can score a bunch of goals. But I'd say... Just underneath... To bring it... Like, I, I don't... Like, you never know. He could develop into a player that has 80 points in a season. Um... But I believe DeBrinket was drafted. Like, he's the same age as I am. Yeah, he was born in 97. He was drafted in 2016. So he's had five years in the league, almost. How many games has he played? Yeah, 366. So I I, I want to say it's around DeBrinket, but not not as good. I, I could say somebody else, too, like, 
like you never know he could work out like a Josh Norris maybe yeah. I don't know I wouldn't put it that high actually Adrian Kemp I'm gonna settle with Debrinket <laughs> just underneath Debrinket are the Marlies set for the playoffs Brandon yeah they are if they if they make it that's gonna be the interesting thing we're gonna go to that right now the interesting thing about the Marlies is that they were in a good spot until until the Rochester Americans came in and said hello. Um, like right now, Right now, if you, like it's this is very small. Let me see if I can. So you see, the Marlies are right here. The Rochester Americans have a winning percentage. They're doing it by winning percentage this year, so it's five forty-seven. The Marlies are at five fifty-one. Now Rochester has one game remaining, and they're not going to hit their magic number of five points. So it's, it's really about how the Marlies do in these last three games. If they lose all three, I believe Rochester makes it. I think they'd have to win two of the three. Like if Rochester wins one, then the Marlies are sort of on the hot seat a little bit. Um, but the Marlies are in a good place if they want to make the playoffs. It's just... They're going to have to. They're going to have to do something good. They're going to have to win two, two of their three games. And if they can do that, then they'll be in the playoffs. But then after that, it's like the first round is a best of three. So Toronto would likely go up against. Um, they likely go up against Belleville. Um, in that first round. And then whoever gets out of that faces Utica, the best team in the North Division. And then after that, it goes to... Uh, why is it not showing the other two? Anyways, it would go to the Division semifinals, best of five, and then best... I think two best of fives, and then a best of seven. But yes, that is going to be the fun thing that is the Toronto Marlies playoffs. It's crazy. It really is. It really, really is. Test one thing out here. Brandon, no worries. Anytime. Anytime. Thanks for checking out the stream, man. Appreciate it. Now, what can I do? Do you, do you guys have any other questions for me? Feel free to ask. Um, I, I really... I don't know... One high end prospect that would get traded. That's a tough question. I don't I don't looking at it now, like there's not 
there's not really one that needs to get traded. Like, the Leafs are in a pretty good spot. I wouldn't say that there's any gold or any prospect that needs to be traded. Especially right now. They're in a good spot. They're pretty good. I do... What are we thinking here? Um, yeah, it, it's it's so difficult to really figure out. But yeah, what do I think of Phil Myers? He's really good, especially at the AHL level. Like he's been he's been on the Marley's top pairing since he got here, and. <laughs> I'll be honest, it's hard to find any mistakes in his game. Like, he's he's really good. He's He's been a really important piece to the Smarlies team. It's just, we'll see if they really get to use him in the playoffs. But he's been somebody, and I don't know how it's going to work next season, because I believe... He has one more year in Nashville. Yeah, he has one more year at two and a half million in Nashville. So that's going to be interesting. That'll be really interesting. And then he's an RFA. And he's 25 right now. So that'll be interesting too. I don't... What do you guys want to see me do? Do you guys want to see me uh, play a game? Over, under, 33 points for Lurgan. I say under. Uh, Lurgan's one that, who knows, like... He's good, but I don't know if he's going to put up the points that good. If he gets top four minutes, it's always possible. It's always possible if he gets top four minutes. What do you guys think, though, of this setup? Cartwheel across the screen. I can't do that, Steve. Matthew, 60 tonight. He better get 60. Geo, will Geo stay? He better stay. They both... Geo better stay. Matthew's better get 60 tonight. Should I show you guys the graphic I have? Ready? Let's see. Let's see if I can find it here to show you. Let me find it. I'm struggling here. Bam. Let me know what you guys think of that. That's the graphic I got. And I think it's, I think it's pretty decent. See, let's go back. What kind of contract would Geo accept to stay? I think I've been saying this to people. 
Um, Geo, I, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if he took. I I would say league minimum, but that's probably out of the question. <laughs> I, I'd say he'd if the Leafs get close to sniffing a Stanley Cup. Um, I, I think he would stay. Three point five, I think, is a little much. He's on the third pairing, especially with Timothy Lilligren. Um, but yeah, that's that's a tough one. Is David Camp a better third line center than Nazem Kadri? I think, like, in the situation, third liner, Nazem Kadri was not a third line center. He should never have been a third line center. As you can see in Colorado, he's having a lot of success. Um, but he's he's been good. And I, I think Camp is in a really good spot um, with where he's at and where Kadri's at. And, like, you think, like, things like like Jason Spezza and whether or not he would stay, like, that really, that also depends. Like, I, I think if the Leafs win a Stanley Cup, Spezza's gone. I think he retires. I wouldn't be surprised if Giordano retired. Although you never know, he would couldn't want more. I think um, I'm forgetting somebody. Wayne Simmons. I think if he if he still loves the game of hockey and he wants to play, he'll be back. But if he, I mean, if he just wants to cup and go, I I would I wouldn't be surprised to see that either. Um, but yeah, they just, if you, um, Steve, SDPN, if you guys are interested in like Steve Dangle and everything like that, they just actually announced, I'm going to go to it here. They just announced the two people for game over. That's pretty cool, actually. It's actually really cool that these that they um, got people like this a little that's really awesome I think if you guys are Steve Dangle fans at all or follow their stuff I, I think this is a very good way of going for them Who becomes the full-time Leaf first? Douglas, Steves, Crawl, and Yamela. That's a lot. Um, <laughs> that's a good question, Liam. Yeah, Steve, you're right. I'm going to say Alex Steves. I'm going to say Alex Steves right now just... Because of the way he's played, he already has AHL experience. He's already played in the NHL as well. I'm not really sure. None of those guys have played NHL minutes. Um, it, it might be Douglas, too. You also have to remember, I, I don't think Crawl is really close to getting there yet. Niamela, you have to see him, I think, in the AHL. Hervonen, probably the same thing what do you think about trying Tavares Matthews Nylander McKay of Camp Marner I William I love that idea it's just like you really spread yourself out thin like I, I personally don't want 
David Camp as a second line center. Um, Marner on the second line is still good, but that's a really tricky one because it 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 doesn't it takes the depth instead of spreading it out thin. And I think Keith has been one person that likes spreading it out because Nylander's on the third line. I think that this one would be a little bit difficult. I I don't think I don't like the idea personally. But anything's worth trying at some point. Like like there's super lines like Tavares, Matthews, Marner. Um There there's points where you have to try and use that, but yeah. I don't I don't I I personally I'd try it. I wouldn't tr probably keep it. Yeah, Kerfoot. I keep forgetting about him. He would be there probably. Yeah, I, I think I think Liam, like when you look at like Marner's game in particular, he works so well with Matthews. And I think splitting that up would sort of it, it wouldn't I don't think it would be the best thing for the Leafs to do. Yeah, Marner should get a natural score. Line two, like, yeah, the PK chemistry, it, it would be a lot of speed. But, I don't know, I just don't, I don't like Camp as the second line center. Like, Camp, uh, I don't know. It, it, it could be cool to try again, but. Have I heard anything about Kasha? Um, I believe he was skating today. He was skating, but he was in a non non regular sweater from David Alter. So yeah, Kerfoot. I mean. I, what's I, let me see here Alex Kerfoot is three and a half mil for next year uh, that's an interesting one but at the same time like what is he putting up he I I I look at this contract don't really have a problem with it right now. Like he's got let me show you here. Like he's he has 51 points in 80 games. I say that's pretty good. I wouldn't say that's a problem though. That's it's decent. Steve, I appreciate it. Oh, you're a friend of Rich Clune. That's amazing. Clune's a great guy. He's probably one of the nicest players on the Marley's team, but they're all nice. But that's cool. That's cool. Enjoy your night, Steve. Take care. I appreciate uh, you tuning in. Tavares, Matthews, Marner, Bunting, Kerfoot, Nylander. Like, that would be good. Again, though, like it's, I I think you're still spreading yourself thin. Bunting is good with Matthews and Marner, and I'm sort of the type of person, Liam, who could be stubborn at times and say if it's not broken, don't fix it. <laughs> but like you never know. How's this?
Sorry, I'm just trying to figure things figure things out here. And let me know like if there is there anything else that you guys want to see on my channel? You guys are the ones watching, following everything like that. So like literally anything. Met Clune post game outside my apartment building. The time after Marley's game. Rich Clune is like out of everybody on that team, especially coming in and being like a first year kind of person covering the team. Clune has been probably like you. You think of it as a team, and you think, and a lot of people, um, a lot of players, sorry, say how how valued he is, how good he is, just as a person, and like as a reporter myself, like you don't see it in the dressing room, not not you can't go in there, but just by the way he approaches me and the way he's sort of it it feels like he has not i don't want to say accepted me because there's nothing to be accepted about but like it feels like he it, he's well very welcoming to me he's very very nice always make sure to say hello he's told me before he likes my photos he likes the stuff so he he's been one of the people who's allowed me to feel comfortable in that setting especially when uh when like if it's if it's a little bit nerve-wracking like he he's been there before and it's he's allowed just not allowed but he's made me feel comfortable if that makes sense That do whatever he brings you joy and we'll be there. Well, thank you. That's actually pretty nice. Um, I love your videos. I think you should upload more. That's why I, I would love to upload more. It's just, it's, I don't really want to go. I don't want to like making videos about the Leafs is is fun and all but I, I think there's a saturation there that's like there's a few people who make those videos and I I personally like there's so many people trying to do that and it's just it's a little bit difficult I like my niche You wouldn't mind a prospect's retrospective. See, Liam, the thing with that, I, I'd probably only have to do Marley stuff, just in the sense that, like, like I said a little bit earlier, um, it's very difficult for me to follow the prospect stuff in general as well, just because there's so many players with the Marleys. That it just makes it a little bit difficult to put extra time and effort. Like, that's the thing I found with even the Marlies and Leafs. Like, I've had to take games off from watching the Leafs because I've been so tired from covering the Marlies so much. So there's there's a little bit of that back and forth. Like, um, it's it's difficult to do all that in the season. And even outside of the season too, like I, I kind of in the summertime want to step away from the hockey part just because it's a little bit, it's a little bit, 
It, it's just a lot. It's a lot covering hockey. JYR, how you doing? I, I don't know if you're still in here, but I saw your message a little bit earlier and I probably should have responded, but... Um, if you're still in here, appreciate it. If you're not, still appreciate it. But yeah, let me, like, I, I would be so down to upload more consistently. It's just trying to figure out what I like. Um, not trying to figure out what I like, but what everyone else watching my videos likes. Because I don't want to just make stuff that's... Like, I, I want to be able to enjoy it and have other people enjoy it, too. You know? So. Um, so, yeah. Like, let me know. Let me know. Like, literally, I... I Outside of the season, you could do like a report video on the incoming Marlies. I I will probably do that. It's actually a good idea. Um, but even like I would, like, you're still here. Great. I'm like, well, this is so difficult for me because like, there are times where I enjoy hockey. But right now, it's getting a little bit... Like, it... I don't know if it's just me and going through the pandemic and everything like that. But, like, it's it's hard to really be all in at hockey in some points. Like, you look at... Like, there's times where I, I would much rather make a video... Like, just a real-life video of, like... I don't know. Like, it sounds stupid, but, like reviewing the best pizza places in Toronto or things like that or doing like I don't know like I'm a very like I love gaming I love I love I love hockey I love I don't know if anybody knows Casey Neistat he's a big YouTuber that I I really like and enjoy um, there's a lot of YouTubers that I do enjoy that I think make cool stuff. Comparing videos where you compare players based on potential speed, shot, etc. Yeah, William, I could do that. It, it's just very hard in the sense like when you're comparing players just because you're when I like it's so hard with YouTube it's it's a little bit easier with articles because and writing because you could take video from like gifs and stuff um, like you're gonna put that into articles like if you want to show speed, like, I'm going to have to sit here and I'm going to have to run around my apartment if you want to see speed. Like, I can't take video and put it on there unless it's my own video. And realistically, like, from Marley's practices, like, I don't, like, I bring my camera and stuff, but, like, they, they don't really show how fast they are or anything like that. I think... I think when making videos, you, you want to be able to show things. And, like, that's it's one thing that I've really been... Like, I, I don't want to use anybody else's content. I don't want to use anybody else's videos. I don't want to get copyright strike because then my channel would be in bad standing. So that part's a little bit difficult. The passion, like... Like, this is what I mean. Like, when I sit there and I talk about the Leafs and I talk about the Stanley Cup and I... Like, there is that passion there. 
like I, I still I still have it but it's like at the same time I, I don't know I like I, I enjoy hockey I enjoy talking hockey it, it just might be that there's been a lot of hockey in the last two years that I don't know maybe I just haven't had a long enough break I don't know but I've I've sort of liked like I want to do a podcast I want to have something like that that's maybe a little bit on the side of hockey maybe a little bit more athlete driven with different athletes with different interesting people that's one thing I'd love to do and I'm trying to maybe work on that but it's it's all really at this point like I don't know where to go where where to shift myself I, I'm not J, JYR I'm not I'm not gonna get burnt out I, I hope <laughs> um, I, I think I know my limits like it, it's it's getting there but um, it's I it's not that I, I take my breaks and when I take my breaks I stay away from hockey and that's that's good I think just learning and having that balance is pretty nice um, SDPN no not SDPN <laughs> uh, that would be funny but no 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 that that would be fun one day like it would be fun to work with those guys like Adam and Steve are great and Jesse's great too. Don't cannot forget about him. But no, it would not be with SDPN. If, for example, McDavid has better speed, but Matthews is a better shot in hands. But McDavid has better IQ. Yeah, I, William, I I do agree. Um, but at the same time, like the only problem I have with that I don't really have a problem with the idea but because the idea is good but I, I feel like it would only work at the NHL level because you've seen McDavid you know how McDavid plays you've seen Matthews how he plays a lot of the people who come to my channel and watch these videos are either people who don't follow the Marlies a whole lot and want that information I, I, I think when I'm making these videos I think that might be a lot of the sort of thing. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, the, like, again, like, if I told you right now Alex Steves has a great shot like, you're not going to be able to sit there and think, oh, yeah, I know he has a great shot because I've seen it. And I have no way to show it to you. So I, I think it's just a little bit difficult there. How about something like Jesse's Once Since 67? Is that is that his stream where he plays NHL and he tries to win a cup? I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong or let me know. Yeah, like, I love video games. Um, yeah, the only thing, like, I hate NHL. I'm so sorry, but that game stinks. That's just me. I've, like, I love NHL. Like, I used to be, when I was in high school, I used to play clubs or ESHL and Like, I enjoyed it, but it's it's a little bit, I don't know. Burnout is real. I've been at uni for a few years. I always let people take mental breaks on my team. 
Yeah, Liam, that's that's really good. Um, I I think burnout is a big thing, and you have to find a way to really balance it without getting burnt out, and you have to also enjoy what you're doing. And I think the more you balance it, and the more you have. The more you have time off and the more you enjoy it, the more you're not going to get burnt out. And like, that's the way I think about it. Like I could, like I'm at the point right now where there might be a little bit of me that loves hockey and I love hockey, but at some point, like for many other YouTubers too, like there, there's times where you have to pivot. Like for me, like, the Marlies are only going to get me so far. Like, and so are the Leafs. Like, like, I don't... I have pretty big aspirations in my life. And I love... I love hockey. But, like... At the same time, there's things like hockey that... You know... That... I'm tr- what am I trying to say? Like hockey is, hockey is very niche. It's very, very, very niche in my opinion. And like as much as I love it, there's times where it would be great to do some other things, work with other people. But yeah, we're getting really deep right now, and it's interesting. You play a lot of FIFA 22. I loved FIFA back in 2016-17. I actually had a channel where I made videos on FIFA and Ultimate Team. Yeah, I I, I want to pronounce your name correctly. Mate? Is that how you pronounce it? I'm sorry if I butchered it. Like, yeah, that's another thing is like... I... Um, I what was I going to say I just oh yeah the GM I, I, it's too difficult for me it's it's too boring like you got to talk to players and the players come and talk to you and the coaches and I don't know what do you want to do sports journalist or reporter or commentator I don't know I enjoy I've always enjoyed making YouTube content. Um, I've always had a love for YouTube ever since. Like, I I found a video, I think, last year or some point. Um, I don't know how I found it, but it was like me at like 10 or 11 or 12 years old making a YouTube video. And... Like, I can remember back to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I played that, and that's right, right in the beginning of YouTube, and haven't stopped wanting to do that ever since. Like, I enjoy it so much. I enjoy, I enjoy interacting with people who like me and who like my stuff. Like, it, it's, it's really fun for me to... Uh, feel like there's a community around me instead of trying to enter somewhere where I might not be welcomed or things like that if that makes sense so like this like I could probably sit here I've already been doing it for how long an hour and 20 minutes I could sit here for five hours probably and do this like that's the thing is like in the summertime I really want to utilize streaming because I have a new PC and it can run things like games and stuff. And I would love to do like a scary games night or things like just stupid things like that. I just think it's fun. And like I one of the things I do want to do in the summer is a 24 hour stream for charity. Because I am now eligible to be paid on YouTube. So like taking... I think calculating, taking all the 
I, I don't know. I have to wait and be approved for it. But just taking like all of the donations or super chat or whatever it is and putting it all together and sending it off to charity. Like, I really want to do that, too. That'd be really fun. Oh, so it's Matthew. So it so it's Matthew. So I I say Matthew. Okay. But yeah, Liam, we're getting deep, deep life chats. <laughs> At six a.m. I mean six p.m. Oh my god. It's been a long day. But yeah, that's. Let me know if that makes sense to anybody, and let me know like if, if. Uh, let me know if that is something like you'd be interested in watching like me playing video games me doing real life stuff where i would maybe like i've seen videos like of i uh, if you guys follow nade shot uh matthew hag he used to he's a pro gamer and now the ceo and founder i think not not ceo the founder of 100 thieves which is a um esports company I remember he would do videos going to all the L.A. burger joints, like in and out I, I don't know if Shake Shack, I think Shake Shack's on the East Coast, but like all of those little places, getting the burgers and then blindfolding and saying which one's the best. That's really cool. I like that stuff. So you might be getting those a lot, like... Like, I, I, will, I will do hockey because it's really cool and really fun and all that stuff. But, yeah. It's midnight in Prague, and you haven't you haven't slept for two days, but you're waiting for Matthews to hit 60. You gotta go to bed. Should go to bed. Nade shot, yeah, Brett. It's if you look him up on YouTube, you'll find him. But it's like those videos are far way down. Like if I go to YouTube right now and I type in yeah, like you type in Nade shot burgers, it's the first one that comes up, and it's In and Out versus Five Guys. And then there's one right below it, In and Out versus Whataburger versus Shake Shack. And it's like, it, it's pretty cool. So, no, Nade Shot. It's Nade Shot, not um, Courage. But yeah, like, what, what do you guys like to see? What would you, like, other than if there was. If it was hockey content plus looking at something else, what would you like to see? I'm, I'm very curious and I always ask for comments on my videos about what people would like to see. And not many people comment. So now is the time to get your suggestions in. Oh yeah, you were also jet lagged. I forgot about that, Matthew. So it'll be it'll be interesting. Over under series of what though? What would you like to see, William, of over-unders?
Let me know what you guys would like to see. Yeah, that's what... Yeah, Brett, that's what I, I'd want to do is, like... Since I'm in downtown Toronto now... Um, I would love to do, like, best pizza places. Like, I know, like... A few pizza places that I've looked at, and Blondie's in particular, if you know what that pizza place is. Um, that would be fun. Though, it... Like, it would cost money, but at the same time, like, I'm getting paid from YouTube now, so it, it would make sense. I, Brett, I wish, like, I was talking to their Marley's PR person today, and just that in the off season, like, I always could, like, reach out to players' agents, because the Marley's, since they're in the off season, like, they don't control the players or what they, anything happens, so I could reach out to a player's agent and be like, hey, like, would this player be down to do this or this or whatever? But I doubt, like, I don't know. I don't know if that's anything that I could do. I can't really, like, I, I'm not really close with any of them, and I'm a reporter, so I'm not supposed to be close, but. Gaming is chill. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, like. I, I'd love to do that. Like, I'd love to game, love to... Like, I know I did a YouTube video with my girlfriend. In the, like, in the March or April of 2020, or maybe June. Where, like, I asked questions and she would throw water balloons at me if I got them wrong about least trivia that people would send in. That'd be cool. Yeah, you know, Matthew, like, the thing that sucks, like, I'm very picky person. Very picky. I don't, like, the games I like, Fortnite, um, there's, I, I'd love to test out other games, like, play scary games, because a lot of people think that's funny, and I think it's funny, um, but I like Fortnite a lot, but it's really hard to grow in that sense. Like, that's the thing is that I would love to take that on full time and maybe have a gaming channel. But that's really difficult. Like, you gotta, you gotta, I, I don't want to switch communities. I like the community that I have. I'm, I like the community that I'm in with Lee's Twitter. Like, sometimes it can get a little bit, like, upsetting, but... Spotlight some of the best food in Toronto. Yeah, like, that's the thing is, like, I suck at, like, I would love, like, for one, like, this would all be here in this apartment. I can't, I can't, I can't vlog. That's one thing that would be very difficult for me. <laughs> um, I've, like, I could, I could sit there and report but, like, holding a camera up and walking around, don't know if that's for me. But I would love to do that. I would love to go, like, down Kensington. That would be cool. I'm sure you'll figure out it all. Like, yeah, I, I'm i very driven, Donnie. I mean, like, it's, it's so hard. It's hard, but... I, like, I don't consider, like, hockey or anything as work. Like, I enjoy it all, and I enjoy doing that stuff. So, it's cool. Take your friend outside hockey and make him pronounce hockey names.
You're like, yeah. Like, that would be cool. Um, again, though, like, I, I'd like to be the one getting the balloons thrown at. And I don't know. Like, that one was good because I was at my parents' house at the time and they had a backyard here. Like, I have a little balcony and I don't don't really know if... Uh, I don't know if I could be doing the balloon challenge on the balcony. Kensington's really cool. I like it. It's really interesting. I went there last summer, even though it's probably ten, not even 10 minute drive from me. Donnie, I, I could do that. See, the thing is like, doing any of that stuff like I don't want to step on anybody's toes I don't want to insult anybody and like just making a video pronouncing Russian hockey players names I like I don't see a problem with it I feel like uh, like uh, there's always people who take things like to heart and like I don't know I, I don't know. That's just, that's just me. Uh, yeah, I don't really know how long I should stay on for. It's been already an hour and a half. Uh. I don't know if. Like, would you guys... I don't know. I don't... I, I, there's... I don't know... Yeah, that's the thing, Brett, too. Like... Like, especially... Like, see, the Marlies are such a niche thing. Nobody's done it. So on YouTube, so it's such a good thing, but it only reaches so far. Like, I I, I love doing it, don't get me wrong, but, like, I, I want to reach more people. I want to impact more people. I want to do fun things and have a lot of people watch. Like, it, it, I just find that having a bigger community is really cool because you can do a lot of cool things, like, like, with the Marlies, I can only go to practice and I can only ask players some, usually hard-hitting, not hard-hitting, but serious questions. I want to have fun. I want to enjoy it. And, like, hockey at times, it's it's very, very serious. I, I, I'm not a serious person. Like, I, I, I enjoy hockey and love it and, like, think it's really cool. At the same time, like, sometimes it gets too serious. But, like, I, I, I'm i not saying I don't enjoy it because I enjoy hockey. I enjoy where I'm at and where I'm writing and all of that stuff. But, like, I like to have fun, too. Like, I, I want to make fun videos. And that's, that's what I try to do with the Marley stuff is I try and try and bring the fun sense to it like I don't want to be serious I know a lot of people like especially with people there's people who criticize Steve Dangle a lot because he's for one he's very his energy is very high and I I am a very dry person I have a dry personality I don't I don't know how to explain it but like I'm I act very my joking is very can be very serious seem very serious at times and like like Steve is Steve's very energetic he's bouncing off the walls he's doing all this fun stuff and like he he provides a very fun angle of things and I think that's cool I think that's one of the things why it stood out to me very early was him because he, he made things fun. He made things enjoyable. And, like, 
there's times where it got serious, and especially like in the playoffs, but the way he shifts it and makes it into something that you'd want to watch and something that's enjoyable, something cool. So, like, I, I don't want to be doing something on such a serious topic all the time. Like, I want to be able to have fun and, like, have, like, when you're sitting there, like, especially with the Marlies, like, you gotta, I, I don't have to watch what I say. But, like, for Steve, too, like, he's not, he's not going in there every day. Like, for, for covering a team, like, these players at times read your stuff. Um, there's, there's times where players read your stuff. Sometimes players read your tweets. And, like, you say one wrong thing. Like, they might come up to you and be like, why did you say this about me? Something like that. And, like, that's the line that I think Steve doesn't have. Like, he's not going there every day. He's not talking to players, so it's pretty good for him. But, yeah, I have a Joe Biagini-like humor. I don't... I know Joe Biagini is, but I don't... I don't know that humor. I thought you were going to say I look like Frederick Anderson, but... But, yeah, that's... That's, that's the thing that I'm trying to do, like... And then I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I want to make a podcast about something serious. And, like, I, th I think it's cool to tell stories of people, to tell and ask the questions. But I want to also be able to have fun with it, too. And, like, I would love for this channel to, to do well and have people come and keep watching and have me having making different types of videos that people enjoy I, I i don't know if i'd say i'm like i i love hockey and everything like that but i want to have fun too if that makes sense but yeah this is i don't even know how we got to this part of the conversation Yes, yeah, Steve is Steve's very good at tackling a problem and being like just bring the light side to it. Like not like there'll be times where he can be serious and be very down to the point, but also where he can joke around, he can have fun and Again, I don't have the energy to do that. I mean, I have the energy to do it. But I don't have... Like, all those videos that you saw were me. Like, when I did those reaction videos, they were me. But, like, at the same time, that's not how I sit and watch hockey games. Like, I'm not sitting there freaking out, yelling at the TV. I know Steve, for a fact, is like that. But for me, like... I won't go sit there and yell at the TV. I'm very quiet when it comes to hockey. Unless it's like playoffs overtime or if Austin Matthews comes down. Like that goal he scored in Winnipeg, I think in overtime. Like goals like that, I, I get a little bit loud for. But, but yeah. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about all that stuff felt like a lot but that's that's my plan it's not a plan but it's something that i'd love to do i'd love to do hockey but i also i do have these other things that i'd love to do too and i don't know whether or not that's me like if if everyone like i i'm only talking to i don't know how many people are even in here still says six concurrent viewers. Uh, but... But yeah, like if... Uh, I'm only talking to a few people, but would you like to see 
like hockey content, but maybe more content, different stuff throughout the summer. Because I, I'd be, I'd be open to trying all these different ideas, like doing hockey stuff, but doing other fun stuff too. Okay, awesome. Awesome, Matthew. Thank you. Who do I want to win, Dallas or Vegas? I want Dallas to win. Just because of the fact that I like Dallas. And the fact that Pizza Boer, I, I, a lot of people were very upset about the quote that he had where he, where he said that he's only, cons like, He's not concerned about Robin Leonard's injury or Robin Leonard. He's only concerned about the players in the lineup. I think a lot of people are taking that the wrong way. I could be wrong, though. I think he just could have probably uh, changed the way he said that sentence. But yeah, Dallas. I like Dallas. I like Vegas, too, but Dallas. Vegas is a good team, but Dallas. Dallas, Dallas, Dallas. I think a lot of people are taking that the wrong way. I could be wrong, though. I think he just could have probably uh, changed the way he said that sentence. Yeah, if you're still in here, let me know. Um, I don't know how long or how much more I should stream for because we're getting really close to puck drop. Yeah, I, I agree, Matthew. Like... Vegas gets through, there's going to be a lot of conversations about salary cap. It's going to be nuts. But yeah, um, I might, I, I could probably go to seven, but like it says seven concurrent viewers, but when I go to participants, there's only two of you. So I might just might just end it off here if you're still in here let me know if you want me to stay till seven i'll i can but um but yeah I, like i don't uh, let me know and let me know too if i should like change up like if I should have more overlays. Like I have, I have full camera. I have be right back. I have this one and I have this one. Let me know and like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eventually like have, um, I know on YouTube, I think it's called super chat. I don't know what it is, but like when you start um, getting, I guess, having, like, getting able to be monetized, you can, um, do Super Chat. Again, I don't know what it is, but it's a thing. And I don't, I don't know what it is.
Yeah. Uh, no, nobody's really talking in the chat, so. Probably just end it off there. If anybody's still here, I appreciate you sticking around and talking hockey, talking deep stuff, too. Um, I'll do... I'm going to have a video out soon with Marley's who could be up in the least, not up in the least lineup, but Marley's who could be used in the least lineup in a few days. And I'll try and stream too. But yeah, thank you so much for everyone for watching. And we'll see you in the next live stream, whenever that may be. Maybe I'll do one tomorrow night. We'll see. Goodbye.